Hey guys, welcome back to the arena. Today we're going to do another standard best of one event. And for this, I actually was looking on untapped.gg to see if I could find some great decks. And when I was looking, I found a Naya Legends list here that has a average win rate of 64.9% with 110 matches. And I've got the cards, so we're just going to go ahead and try it out, take it out for a spin. And yeah, it looks like a lot of fun. Um, before we get into it, if you're new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. I really do appreciate you. And uh, if you do end up liking my content, please consider subscribing and maybe sharing it with a friend of yours. For my returning viewers, thank you guys so much again for coming back and supporting me. It really does mean the world to me. You guys are awesome. And then also, there will be a deck list here under the description, both on moxfield.com and untapped.gg. And then I'll also have a link to all of my other playlists in case you guys want to see more of my videos. So I do also want to give a big shout out here to my members. Thank you guys for becoming members and helping to support the channel. Um, you can become a member for as little as $1.99 a month to get early access to my videos. So if you want to know how to do that, here's exactly how you do that. If you would like to become a member and help support my channel, you can do so. Just click on the join button right next to where it says subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Um, or if you would like to just support my channel just on a one-time basis, you can also click the super thanks button uh, here right on the, uh, also right under the banner here for the video. So these are both great ways to support the channel. I really appreciate you guys and I couldn't do this without you. So thank you guys so much again for your consideration. All right, let's get into some games. All right, let's jump in. So yeah, I haven't played Nia Humans in quite some time, but it is a super fun deck. So just looking at this build of the deck, um, it's kind of revolving around big great cards like Halana and Elena, which is a 2-3 first strike for four mana that has reach. And then at the beginning of combat on your turn, you put X plus one plus one counters on another target creature you control, where X is Halana's and Elena's power. And then that creature gains haste. And so you basically have, um, you know, a lot of the big, great cards out of all three colors. You've got Adeline, just to give you um, sort of lots of advantage here. You have Halana and Elena to start buffing up your creatures. You have Samut, which is kind of interesting, who is a nice card that kind of rewards having haste. And so that's kind of a nice sort of little combo there with Halana and Elena. <clears throat> it's a two, three, first strike, vigilance, haste for three. And whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, if it entered the <clears throat> if it uh, entered the battlefield this turn, you draw a card. Um, it's also pulling on the power of Anim Pakal, which creates um, gnomes that are attacking with haste for every counter on Anim Pakal. And so this is another really great way to kind of make some haste creatures and get in. And then you've got Inti Seneschal of the Sun, which helps buff up your creatures and gives them trample. You have Hajar, Loyal Bodyguard, as a 3-3 for 2, which can then help make all of your legends indestructible. Malira is another kind of way to protect your creatures here um, as another 3-3 for 2, which is just great value, great stat line. You have three copies of Thalia to help kind of slow down the spell decks. And then you have some really nice one-drops here. You've got Lunark Veteran to help gain life and kind of stay in the game against Mono Red. And then you also have four copies of Hopeful Initiate, just to help use all these counters to get rid of enchantments or artifacts. And then this is a card that will probably grow quite a bit since all the other creatures are gonna be at least two power or greater. In addition, you have three copies of Roaming Throne, which will be naming human. And yeah, you'll be <laughs> just getting lots of triggers, looks super fun. Uh, you have Animist's Might here, which I haven't seen actually. And I guess this is just sort of a fight mechanic here. Um, which is really cheap if you have legends. So a lot of these creatures are legends, and so it's a very cheap fight mechanic. Um, and then you do twice as much damage. Um, so target creature control deals damage equal to twice its power to target creature or planeswalker you don't control. So kind of a nice little, uh, nice little fight spell there, a little bit of removal. Um, the mana base looks like they're running 24 lands. You've got four copies of Plaza of Heroes to help protect your legends. And then you have um, some of the nice kind of one-off um, 
lands in each color. You've got Iganjo beside you just to help deal with some other pesky artifacts or enchantments and give you so a little bit more potential removal spells here. And then just um, a lot of other cards just for fixing. So deck looks like a lot of fun. Let's go ahead and jump in. Haven't played Naya in quite a bit, so excited to try it out. Yeah, it looks like a really fun build. Lots of triggers. I'm a little bit concerned it doesn't have a ton of removal. You've just got like the four fight spells, two Iganjos. So hopefully you can just kind of overwhelm them and that'll be enough, but I guess we'll find out. All right, opening hand looks great. We've got all the colors we need. Got a nice one, two, and then a couple four drops here. We are going to be on the draw, so see how this goes. Looks like we're up against Mono Red. This will be definitely quite a bit harder on the draw, but hopefully we can draw into like a three drop or something, get something going. Guess they're just cycling their ancestral languor on us. Okay, get Inti going. I don't think we want to sit back here. We're probably not blocking, so. And we've got two copies of Halana and Lana. We might want to keep them around, although I do like that we have four land here, so maybe we could toss one here just for the extra counter. Although I suppose the other thing, though, is that um, if Inti's around, this will grow naturally. So not sure we want to discard the card now. Yeah, I guess pushing damage is always good. Not sure if it's right, but we're just getting damage in. Yeah, and I figured there's a decent chance they were just going to kill Inti anyways, so getting it in while we could seems good. Guess we can beside you this turn. So here I think we can play around the Monstrous Rage. We can block the etching and see if they want to use their Monstrous Rage. And then if they do, we can just beside you in response. See if they go for it. Yeah, there it is. Now we're gonna see if we can stabilize here. Roaming Throne is pretty good. I guess Halana and Lana makes this a four or five though. That seems great. Yeah, I, I guess if we like if we go for Roaming Throne, we can have double triggers, but this is still, I think, probably just what I want to be doing, getting a four or five.
So do we want to drop to two here? We take out the code breaker. I think we have to respect the damage. Although I guess if we drop to three, it's not a whole lot better. They can draw some more cards. Ugh. Yeah, and then they... Keeping our Halana on Lana feels pretty good too. So I guess if we drop to two, we keep this around. Yeah, I don't know if it's right or not, but I think we maybe do it this way. Veteran is sorely needed here, so very happy to see that. Go down to one. Back up to two. And then pushing with Adeline feels really good. Hopefully we can close this game out really fast. Um, I think we wanna keep, let's see. We'll have three blockers. So I guess if they draw another creature, it could be problematic. So maybe we keep back the initiate for this one turn. That could be a way we lose. So I think we just push with Adeline here. I mean, if they draw into Lightning Strike, that's pretty rough too. they didn't block the one one lightning striker bust Okay. All right, so I think we want to put these two on the Swift Spear. Because if they have like Monstrous Rage, just want to make sure we can soak all the damage. Although keeping the veteran around would be really great. Let's see, I guess if we, if we block it like this, we're still soaking most of it. So I think this is probably fine. This way we keep our veteran. So they're hoping to draw a play with fire. Play with fire or Kumano faces Kakazan or bust. I guess either slow rolling it or they just uh, haven't got it and are gonna time out maybe. But yeah, this deck seems super powerful. Really happy with it so far. And it does seem like it's set up, especially with the Roaming Thrones, to really take advantage of Hopeful Initiate. So I do like the build, at least initially.
That'll do it. I want to know. Yeah, opening hand looks great. We've got Initiate into Thalia. Thalia is nice here because it stops the turn two god draw for Boros Convoke, like the turn two uh, Knight Errant play, just by making the uh, Lethal Demolition cost one more. Okay, now Samut is going to get in. It's feeling pretty good. Can start pushing. And Iganjo is really good here. Okay, that was a nice pickup. Now we can play Halana and Elena, which just feels really good. Fortunately, we can't give it self haste, but that's okay. Does seem like a very powerful deck, though. is pretty good. But Iganjo is still going to be really nice here. Ooh, Animist's Might. Yeah, that's pretty great. Twice its power, so we can just take out the Warden. Yeah, that feels pretty good. Let's see. Twice its power. Oh, yeah, that works. Okay. And that should do it. Yeah, those animus mites are, are awesome. Man, even up against double case, still felt like a pretty breezy match. 2-0. Oh. And looks good. We've got Cavern, Plaza, stuff to do. Definitely want to get Thalia going here.
Ooh, an Impa Call is really good. Yeah, I think we just go for it. I guess we could like set up like a Malira to protect it because they could still, they could like march it or they could do some other annoying stuff. So we could set up like Hajar. Um, I mean, this is, this is this is also nice against against um, if they have like lockdown. So maybe we just push it. They probably do have some kind of removal for it, though. I don't know. Yeah, partition. I feel like they're just setting up for lockdown. Also, just kind of slow roll everything here because I think giving them a three for one is pretty awful. So I think maybe we just sit. So we could make our guy hexproof. It gives up a land, though. I think we just let it happen. That's a good one. They've got board wipe. Hmm. Like, we could go for Jace. They just have Sunfall, it's really bad. <clears throat> I think getting down to 10. Yeah, I think we wanna work on Jace just in case they've got the, uh, the board wipe here. Now we can set up a jar. Actually, I guess Malira. Eh, either one is fine, I suppose. Okay, so now we're probably facing Wandering Emperor. Don't think we want to give them the Halana and Elena. Also not a huge fan of giving them Thalia. But I think we do want to threaten the Jace. But I suppose this way if we like send everything at Jace, they could use Emperor to get rid of one of our guys, but not the other two. We still take out Jace. Yeah, I guess we go for it. Do 
do we protect it? I think we do. Question is, do we want to put out another layer of protection? If they've got lockdown, it's pretty awkward. Or if they have like board wipe. Hmm. Yeah, I, th I don't think we want to get four for one here. I think we just sit. Do they have more? Yeah, they had to depopulate. Oof. It's funny, I expected Sunfall but not depopulate. we care yeah I think we can just pay it um, it slows us down a little bit I think that's okay NT is really good And I think we just leave up Plaza. We don't risk the rest of our hand just yet. So we can play Veteran here. Yeah, there's the Sunfall, unfortunately. And then I think we could play the land just to give protection here. I guess holding it for like NT would be the only other option. But I guess we just leave it up here for protection. Yeah, maybe we just played a little bit too soft. It's, it's kind of always tough to know if you go for the Jace or not.
we got plenty of plazas to protect it. Double march. Yuck. I guess we just sack in response. Initiate is good. Nice draw there. Yeah, Animus Might is great. turn clock Let's see what they've got sunfall oof well we can at least prevent them from getting a 2-2 two -two. Memory delusions are really coming in handy for him, though. I've already read your thoughts. You won't stop us. The Duke of the They have three steps ahead. Hopefully not. Ah, that's tough. Oh well. Problem is now they have access to Restless Anchorage, which is not great. <clears throat> and another Deluge. Yeah, three steps ahead is so good. So maybe if we had just like gone for face instead of Jace earlier on, <clears throat> they wouldn't have had the time to draw into all the extra nonsense. Yeah, sometimes I feel like you just kind of go all out against them, and then if they've got the board wipe, they just got it. But it's a it's a tough matchup. Bandits Hall, interesting. I suppose that's pretty good with Jace. Ooh, a Nimpa Call is a good one.
I will say the Animus might definitely does seem fantastic. And yeah, the Plaza of Heroes really also just a great card in this deck. It's going to be a tough uphill battle, though. I mean, they've got Bandit's Hall plus two Planeswalkers and a grip of hand and a grip of cards in their hand. So it's going to be really, really pretty tough. We're also down to twenty six cards. They could just try to deck us here if they've got extra Jaces. Yeah, I was afraid of another Jace. Okay, well, Salute is great. I think we just gotta go face here. Um, can use the Animus Might. Anchorage will be able to take out some of our stuff. I guess let's start with Animus Might to get rid of their their token. Well, I suppose we could target a Planeswalker. I didn't realize that. Wow. It's pretty good. So if we go for Semwoot, we won't have Indestructible. Um, hmm. Could attack with an Impa Call and then just use the Plaza to protect it. I think Semwoot is fine though, although they, they probably have more board wipes, I'm guessing. Then we've got nothing. So I think, yeah, we just push with both. And then just use Plaza to protect on Impacal. Double knockout blow, rough. Yeah, I think that might be it for our heroes for this one, unfortunately. Double planeswalker and like a bunch of card draw here, yeah. No 
Wow, the dude out of nine cards in hand. Let your flames do the talking. Yeah, this one's pretty much over. They're just having fun at this point, I think. Probably could have played it a little bit differently. Still no good attacks, unfortunately. Um, God, we only have five cards in library. Oh well, I guess we just kind of set up a little bit. They, they've almost certainly have another board wipe. This game is pretty much over, but I guess we just play it out like it isn't. There's the sunfall. I think they're out of Jace's though. I mean, they only have, I guess they've got three in the yard. So they do have another Jace. Yeah, unfortunately they're going to get there. 
I guess we could have tried to kill like Wandering Emperor last turn and then we just take whatever this is. Oops. gonna do it blue white control it's always a rough one all right two and one all right two and one we can do this Yeah, control matchups are always... I'm never sure if I play them right. <clears throat> but I love this deck so far. It seems like sweet. Especially Animus Might seems really good. Malira and Hajar seem like natural inclusions. Happy to keep here. I think one concern though I have is that Mono Red can be a potential rough matchup. The only life gain we have is the Lunark Veterans. So that's just a consideration. Okay, since we've got double Malira, let's just drop a Malira, see if we can trade with the adversary. Or potentially hold back the Kumano. Well, they, I suppose they have a decent chance of having uh, Monstrous Rage. Okay, I guess if they're not going to play Monstrous Rage, then we, we're open to trading here. The other option, let's see, I guess like next turn we could play like Malira and take down Godric and then trade here. I feel like giving away three damage is not something we want to be doing. Otherwise we play like Samut, get a card. That just seems a little bit weaker though. Yeah, I think we want to just make the trade. Keep our life total as high as possible. Uh, Lunark Veteran will be good, but right now I think we need to take out this Godric. Question is, we want to play Malira or Hajar? I don't think it really matters. Um, hmm. Yeah, we're gonna pain for one here, unfortunately, but that's that's okay, I think. Now we're just going to try to hold it down and survive until we can get Lunark going. Yeah, I think we've got to respect this here. Also, we just have a lot of stuff to do if we can just survive long enough. Definitely want to take out the etching. Yeah, there's the monstrous rage that we thought that, that they had for sure. Okay, that's a really nice pickup. Uh, we could some mood and like hope to draw land, but I think it's just too too risky. We're at too low life here. Um, either way, we're gonna pain. I guess we want Hajar. Although I guess Thalia is pretty good here. It taxes their mana. I think I like Hajar more though because it can still trade if they have another um, monstrous rage. So I'm just gonna go for Hajar here. I think.
If we're given the option, definitely blocking adversary here. Okay, I guess they've got the frenzy. That's unfortunate. It's not going to do anything. So I think we just take it, drop to three, and then hope to stabilize. Yeah, we really need the, um, the veteran. So we could some moot here and hope to like hit a one drop to try to get some extra life going. Um, I think roaming throne is just really good though. And then definitely gonna hold here just in case they've got some other nonsense. Well, I guess, let's see. So they can replay Squee. I think we've got to get rid of it, though. So we block here, go to two. Otherwise, I suppose we could go to one. Yeah, I think we probably go to one. Like, having the life gain is just so, so important here. I think we just have to, have to go to one here. Really nice. Now we can get Talia going and Samut. Actually, let's do Samut first here. Just to see what we draw. Yeah, double triggers on Lunark Veteran is what it's all about. And I think we just attack with Samut and hold. And then double triggers is pretty sweet. Okay, we could kill Swift Spear here. I think we're fine just taking two off the of Swift Spear and taking out the token of the adversary. Yeah, that feels fine. We did enough damage there. Here, I think we just replay Samut to get the card and also the life. Make sure to choose the new copy. And then I think now we can start attacking with Veteran. Animus Might is pretty good. I don't think we need to use it just yet, though. Although I suppose it just, like... Like we've got Iganjo. I'm trying to think of a situation. I suppose if they like draw into what could they draw into? I don't think it actually matters. Like even if they Yeah, even if they use like Monstrous Rage, they only get to X4. Can still double block. Ah, I'm just gonna do it anyways. Actually no with Thalia. We need the Iganjo ready. Actually, we have Iganjo since we've got two legendaries. So yeah, I'm just gonna use it, it's fine. Because we can still Iganjo for one, I think that's why. In case they drew like Slick Shot or something like that. We just want to clean off the board as much as possible. And 
Now I guess we push with Thalia plus Samut. Since we've got the Aganjo. We still definitely want to play some creatures of it all possible to start gaining some more life. Being at four is super rough. Lightning Strike, yeah, we can protect it. Let's see, let's be careful how we tap this, though. I want to have access to the brush land. On the board tricks. Yeah, and I guess they're trying to decide if it's worth pushing to finesse like one point of damage. I think at this point we probably trade since we're at four, then we can just replay veteran in the air. Yeah. Slowly tightening the noose. Can we get it done? Okay, that's a good one. Good old double trigger. Yeah, and I think now we're probably in the clear. Yeah, that was uh, a little close for comfort, but feeling good. Three and one. I really do like the, um, yeah, the plazas are just fantastic since we've got so many legends. Samut definitely works pretty well against uh, Mono Red. Just the vigilance is pretty great. Not sure about other matchups, but okay, yeah, I don't want to keep a one lander, unfortunately. Especially on the play. Well, that'll work. Um, oh, this is interesting. I think we. Like, Samut and Anim Bakal is a really nice combo. It's nice to have access to removal also, but like Roaming Throne is also pretty sweet. It's like such a sweet combo too, if we can get it going. We're going first. Yeah, I think I'm going to toss back the Animus Might, as strange as that sounds. So I think just everything else just works together so well. white humans looks, looks like it I think we get in with some moot. Start setting up. I would definitely love to have access to the Animus Might. So maybe that was a little bit kind of presumptuous. But I think like this is such a sweet combo if we can get it going. Ooh. 
Ooh, Helena and Elena is sweet too. Like, Aneem Pakal is really good here, though. Like, we get the free card draw. Start getting Aneem Pakal going. Roaming Throne is also amazing. I also like the fact that it has the ward. I think that probably puts it over the top for me, because they could easily have, like, um, Brutal Cathar here. So I think Roaming Throne is probably the call even though we don't draw a card and don't start like building up, but it does, I think it sets us up really well for the next turn. Yeah, there's a Brutal Cathar. So I think that was definitely the right call. That was a really nice pickup. So now we can go Halana and Elena, Animus Smite, the Brittle Cathar, bring back the Samut, pump it up, and push. <sighs> could also use it to kill the Warden. Um, the Warden is going to be a problem. This is interesting. Could also bring in a Neem Pakal. Use that to get double triggers going. Feels pretty good as well. <sighs> yeah, I think the Warden is just a little bit too dangerous. Wait a second, is this... Oh, I've got to do this post-combat. So if we push for eight, kill the Warden. Even if they have, like, another Brutal Cathar, they could push back for seven. But then we, like, kill them the next turn. Maybe we should hold the Roaming Throne here. Oh god, Thalia is the one that's stopping the, the Animus might. Oh my god. <laughs> Whoops. Okay, so that was the wrong play. Um, definitely should have used the Nimba call there. I forgot about the Thalia attacks. That was completely my bad. Um, whew. series really good this is gonna be a fight that's for sure Okay, so now I think we drop an Impa call and we can Animus Smite. We 
They're still pushing a ton of damage at us. But I think we just have to kill this warden. Wait a second. This costs four mana? Oh, right, because it has to target... Oh, God. Okay, so never mind. We gotta do that after combat with the Anim Pakal. Yeah, because now if we attack, we make a bunch of creatures. The problem is, so like we use the Animus Might to kill the Warden. We only have two blockers. They push in for for eight, so we've got to sit, unfortunately. I think we hold the brush land for the Inti. Yeah, that major misplay <laughs> could easily cost us the game here. Whew. Luckily, we've got first strike on Halana and Elena, so we can block adversary if they decide to push with it. I guess if they push with the other four, we have enough blocks. But now we can like, I guess we can use Inti to give Aninpa called Trample and push for a lot. We've still got to be super careful about our life total though. Okay, they've got another Brutal Cathar and another Copper Coat. Whew, okay. Yeah, we might just be dead. So I guess if we like, all right, if we play the NT, I'm trying to think how we win this game. We can make the NT a, here, I'm gonna play the brush land just so we have access to plaza. So we could make the NT, yeah, another plus four, plus four, and then it'll be plus six, plus six because of its own ability when we attack. Then we could make it plus eight, plus eight. Could swing for 13, which is a whole lot and a whole bunch of creatures here. I don't think we have enough to do it. Um, but like next turn, they just get rid of one of our blockers and just push for lethal. So I'm kind of curious like how much we can actually, I think we're just dead here, but I'm actually a little interested to see how much we can actually push. I guess if we make NT, it's the same as just making more dudes. Yeah, I'm just gonna make a huge enemy Pakal. And again, I think we're just like dead here. So I guess we could draw into something and then have four blockers. They get rid of one of them. We block three guys. We're still super dead. Whatever. 
Just having fun at this point. <laughs> we have 19 one ones. Good God. This is ridiculous. Oh, my Lord. We might not get there, but damn, we're going to have fun trying. <laughs> I guess there's like a chance that they're dead, right? I mean, they block the 8 8, they block the 2 3, they block probably a Nimpa call with probably a, the Knight Errant, I assume. Then we're still pushing, and then they block one of the one ones, pushing seven. We're pushing. I think they're actually. I think they're dead. <laughs> oh my god, this is hilarious. Eleven counters on the Nimpa call. What a joke. <laughs> Yeah, I even like completely biffed like earlier in the game and I don't think it's gonna matter. That's so great. Alright, then just for funsies, let's uh let's save our Helena and Elena. Gap there! Oh my god! What a beating! <laughs> yeah. This deck has got legs. It's pretty sweet. All right, four and one. Opening hand looks good. What do we got? I wonder how this deck does against Golgari. I mean, Golgari is super rough against mono white humans, just has so much value. But we've got a decent amount of value ourselves. Some decent protection with like the Hajars and the Maliras. Boo Hiss. We wanted that Lunark Veteran. Although I think here it's maybe not as important. And they got the Animus Might. Oh well. Oh well. We could just go for Hajar here. I think they, they run like the 3 2 though. So I feel like Thalia is probably a little bit better. Because they also probably run a decent number of spells. Like, they could have Liliana here, too. So just slowing all that nonsense down feels pretty good. They have the Bronco. So we could Samut and get a card. Um, I kind of want to get these... Hopeful Initiates into the mix. Hajar is pretty good. Like, Hajar plus Initiate is tempting. I think I like that a little bit more than Samut. I mean, Samut does get us a card, which I shouldn't discount. But I think I'm going to go for the bigger potential payoff. Also having like a little guy in case they do have the Liliana feels pretty good. Archfiend. 
sure. Samut is admittedly not at its best right here, but I think that's okay. Um, do we want to hold it for any particular reason? I think we just want to play our cards out, although I kind of like getting Veteran down plus Initiate. Hmm. Don't love giving up the value with Samut. I think I'm just going to play Veteran plus Initiate. Here's the Liliana that we knew they had. I guess they can get rid of our Samut. Hmm. Do we lose the Phantom here? I mean, Phantom can fly over if they attack with Archfiend. Is life gonna matter? That's the real question. I guess it might. I think I'll probably just hedge here. I think the life might potentially matter, so I'm going to go ahead and sack an initiate. This way, if they attack, also we have like a clean way to kill Liliana. So this kills the Liana. Can they kill us in a turn? I guess they might be able to. Do we need to hold back Phantom for Archfiend for any reason? I don't think so. I don't think I don't think yet, maybe. Maybe not quite yet. Oh, they do have a Restless Cottage. That's kind of awkward. Maybe I should have held back one guy here. Okay, that was a nice that was a nice draw. Sorry, I'm not interested in dying today. Yeah, maybe they've got some sort of combo here. Or I guess they maybe they have enough with Caustic Bronco. I am wondering if I should have held back the Luminous Phantom, but I think we're okay at 12. Guess they're going for it. not gonna do it all right so if we just if this, if this hang on if we kill this thing oh no no we can just block and that's fine okay yeah nice five and one so far, so good.
Yeah, opening hand looks sweet. Question is, what do we, uh, what do we want to play on two? Okay, up against mono red. Probably just Thalia here. I mean, Inti's great later. Hajar is also great. I think we just want to go Thalia though. Slow him down. Oh yeah, if they're setting up. Um, they got the show off. Inti is pretty good here. Do we want Hajar to keep Thalia around? I kind of think we might. Just attacks their mana. I think that might be slightly more important than Inti. Inti's pretty great, I'm not going to lie. But I think Hajar feels like the safe move. Definitely pushing for some heat. Really happy we've got this Lunark Veteran. Double Veteran is even even hotter. But I think Alana, Halana and Elena is going to be sweet here. Yeah, this feels so good. And then I think we just probably make Thalia a 4-3 just because it's like the most important effect on the battlefield. And then I think we just attack with Hajar and Veteran. This way we can double block the Swift Spear if we need to. Although actually, I guess we hold back Veteran so we can double block like that. Just push three. Then we've still got Halana and Elena for the Slick Shot show off. The nice thing too is that um, even if they had something like Monstrous Rage, we have the Hajar to pump our Halana and Elena on the blocks for the show off, even if they had that. But yeah, that was pretty brutal. Whew, six and one, final boss. Can we do it? Can we get there? Even with all of the crazy, well, I guess a couple misplays, <laughs> um, and me not knowing the deck. Yeah. But see, I make the mistakes so you guys don't have to. Something like that. This deck is sweet, I gotta say. I'm, I'm already super sold on it. Um, I'm gonna hold back kind of like the rest of my thoughts until post-tournament here, but I gotta say it is a sweet, sweet deck. And the Animus Mites are great. They are pretty sweet. Okay, I think we want to run out the Thalia, just kind of slow things down a little bit. Get some Inti action going next turn. Actually, never mind. We can't afford Inti or Anim Pakal. We need red sources. Oh god, it's this deck. Boros Heroic. Yeah, we have to kill that thing stat. I think we need to hold the Aganjo. Um, do we push here? I think we push because we're probably never blocking that. All right, 
so it looks like they're they're holding the Lauren's escape. Um, but they actually, never mind. They can't cast it since we've got Dahlia out. So I guess we just Animus might probably the Codebreaker here. I think we still hold Iganjo. And I think we're still just racing. We don't race super well against this deck, but <laughs> we really need a red source. Show off is beating. Yeah, I was afraid that might happen. One turn too late. Oh well. Guess we can try to set up and then hopefully survive long enough to... We might just be dead though. Like getting stuck on red for that long is super rough. Oh God, double show off. No, no, not like this. <sighs> Decent chance if we don't block, we just, I mean, I think we probably just lose anyways, but I guess like next turn, what we could do is we could like float the mana Play an Impacal, use the Animus Might to take out one of the show-offs. Giving away an Impacal is so bad, though. I feel like we have to, like, hope they haven't got it. Like, I'm sure we're probably dead, but I don't think there's a good comeback here if an Impacal dies. Oh my god, do they just have, like, the nothing? <laughs> that would be so amazing. Uh, okay. Alright, so we play NT. No, that's crazy. We have to hold up Iganjo. Wait, we can do both, right? So we Animists might... For sure. Although we don't need to do that yet. I guess we go Inti first. Okay, I think we start with Inti. And then I think we attack the Nimpa call. Man, Besiju can take out the etching. That's pretty good also. But we don't have enough mana for everything here, so I think we just have to... Actually, I guess we have to get rid of Yganjo here, because like if we have the Besiju, we play that, use the green for the Animus Might can't do it all or we just get rid of an impa call that's probably the move actually just get rid of an impa call okay veteran is good so we play besiege you Animists might on one of the show offs. Probably still just dead. Okay, they had Lauren's escape, but at least they used that this turn. Can't play the veteran, because then we don't have access to be Ganjo. Oh, that sucks. I think we gotta hold Iganjo though, because otherwise like we're for sure dead. Feels crazy, but I think that's the move. Have to block. Okay. They've got nothing. Guess we'll see. Oh, that's cool. Get a little inti trigger. Oh my god, are we still in this? <laughs> oh my god. All right, let's get veteran going. Um, cavern to protect the Anemba call. Oh 
Oh, veteran, are we gonna do it? Oh my god. Suspense is killing me. No twin strike, no twin strike. Got there! Woo! Oh, yes! Sweet, sweet victory. Okay, yeah, this deck is sweet. <laughs> um, let's take a look at it. Okay, seven and one. It's one loss to control, and then we just beat everything else, so that feels good. Even with like my, my ridiculous stumble in one of those matches where I forgot about Thalia existing. Um, okay, so let's look at the deck real quick. So, closing thoughts. First of all, I think this deck is definitely sweet, and you absolutely should craft it. Um, so it definitely gets my stamp of approval there. I will say the one thing that felt really kind of close was not having quite enough life gain. So if I were to add anything in, yeah, I'm just not sure. I'm just not sure like what good options there are. Maybe bring in like some number of um, intrepid adversaries. Like you definitely have like the land to get it done. You have 24 land. So adversary is gonna be really good in this deck. It's a human. So you can still name it and do stuff with it. Maybe, God, what would you shave though? Like, I actually think that, yeah, like the Samut Anim Bakal combo is pretty, is pretty hilarious. Um, I like the two of Malira and Hajar. I definitely think you keep that. Thalia is a three of, I completely agree with. Um, and I can see why they did like the Initiate plus Veteran for like the early drops just to have something to do. That's probably right. I guess if I were to shave something, I would probably, you could maybe shave like one Initiate and like maybe shave like an Inti for like two copies of Intrepid Adversary. That would be an option. Um, I don't know if you want to go down to like one Samut. I mean, Samut was pretty good. You could also like maybe shave a copy of Roaming Throne and then like cut down to like 23 land maybe. But I'm not sure on that. Like their, their, their land seems like pretty well figured out. They have, I guess like, Automatically 12 sources with plaza, secluded courtyard, and cavern. So you have, I think, let's see, how many sources of white do they have? They have 18, 20 sources of white. That feels really good. They have, let's see, 18, 20, 22 sources of green. That seems a little excessive. Like 22 green sources seems a bit much considering all we have here is like a couple like later drops and like the white seems more important so i don't know if that's correct for the land i guess like they want access to like colored mana for animus might and that kind of makes sense for red they only have 14 sources they have a fair amount of red so i'm not sure that's correct so maybe you could like futz with the land a little bit and sort of shift things around um yeah i would probably cut like one nt maybe like a hopeful initiate get some intrepid adversaries like you have tons of land they're better the more land you have the other thing that you could consider is like maybe adding like let's see hard hitting question that could be another like removal spell if you want more access to removal it's nice and cheap um it doesn't like like the doubling effect on animus might is sweet right so if you want access to a little bit more removal you can maybe add in some hard-hitting questions and that seems pretty good it is sorcery speed you could also have access to i think march is like super good um just like in general just sort of like a catch-all do everything card um i don't know if you have enough white sources to support it is the only question like you have oh man i guess you really don't you have like six yeah you don't really have enough for it even with plaza you only have 12. so yeah a couple changes i might make here but i really like how the deck the deck works i think it's fantastic and i would absolutely craft it so thanks guys for watching we will see you in the next one 
And yeah, if you like the standard event um, type content, please put it in the comments because that really does help me. Um, I think they're a lot of fun just like trying out like different decks that are doing well, but let me know what you guys think.